Yes, the zombies are back now and they're ready to test. test, 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 test. They'll take the development curve and tear it from your chest. Reflect to your mind, take a test and press your green. Oh, with an undead bee. You're watching Rails testing for zombies. In this first level, we're going to be going over unit testing. But before we do that, we need to talk a little bit about testing philosophy. There's about, you could say there's four different philosophies. First is, of course, no testing at all. Not really a philosophy. You just don't write any tests. But that's where everybody starts, right? The next phase is verification testing. This is where you're going to write code and then write tests that wrap around your code. The next step is test first. This is what we're going to be going through in this course where we write a test, it's a failing test, we then write enough code to make the test pass, and then we reflect and see if we need to refactor that code. Lastly, what we're not going over in this course is strict test-driven design. This is where you eventually want to be, and it's where your tests you use to define the behavior or almost the design of your application, and that defines how your application gets developed and crafted. So you might be wondering, what exactly is unit testing? Well, when we say unit testing, we're talking about testing pieces of our application, pieces of source, in isolation from the rest of the applications. So you're going to end up with lots of individual unit tests. So when any one piece breaks, you're going to know exactly how to fix it, hopefully, which makes your application a lot easier to debug. Also, a lot of people think that good unit tests lead to good documentation. If you're looking at somebody else's code base and you need to know how it works, well, looking at the test might give you a good hint. Test unit was created in the very early days of Ruby by Nathaniel Talbot. Now, you might be wondering, why are we doing test unit and not something like RSpec? You may have heard of RSpec. Well, test unit is a more basic testing library. It's also the testing library that Rails uses by default. So if you ever want to read through the Rails source or contribute back to Rails, you're going to have to know test unit. Test unit is also similar to many other testing libraries from many other languages, so it'll be easier to learn if you're coming from another language. Let's go ahead and take a look at the basic structure of a test unit file. The name of the file is probably going to be the subject you want to test, underscore test.rb. Inside that file, you're going to require the test unit library. The test unit library gets included with Ruby by default. It's not a gem you have to install, so all we have to do is require it. Inside the test file, we declare a class that has the subject capitalized and then the word test. This inherits from test unit test case. We then can write a bunch of methods, which are each of our tests. So here we have test, and then we specify what we are testing with underscores. Inside the test, the basic building block is going to be a assertion. So this is what we are asserting to be true or asserting to match. You see that test to beaker icon over there? Throughout our entire course, you're going to see that a lot, and that's to signify where the assertion is inside each of our tests. Each test typically has one assertion. That's sort of a best practice. You'll see people sometimes doing a lot of assertions per test, but it's kind of a bad practice. Let's go ahead and write a really basic test. We're going to call it boolean test.rb. Inside the file, we're going to require test unit. We call this boolean test. Our first test is called test true is true. We're going to send a single parameter into the assert method. And if that parameter is true, then the test is going to pass. If the parameter is false, obviously not going to pass. So let's go ahead and run this on the command line, Ruby boolean test. And here we see the test passed. That little dot right there, that's telling us that we had one test and the test pass. If we have a bunch of tests, we're going to see a lot of dots. If we change the parameter in our assert method to false here, and then we run it from the command line, you're going to see here that our test fails. We get that F. You might notice here that the failure message isn't really that helpful. It's not very descriptive. So sometimes in tests, we need a way to specify a more descriptive error message. We can do that by simply sending in a second parameter to the assert method. In this case, we're saying true should be truthy. Then if we run the test again, if it fails, it's going to give us that nice descriptive error message. 
Let's jump into a better example. This time we're going to extend the string class to give it some methods. So we're going to start test first, writing the test. So here we're inside string extension test. There's our class. Our first test is going to be test is number. So we're going to test to see if that string contains a number. Normally with test first, we'd only write one test at a time, but for the sake of this example, I'm going to write a second one. We're going to test to see if the string is not a number. So we wrote the test. Let's go ahead and run them. And yes, they fail. They error out as they should. That's the first step in test first. We want to write a failing test. Now that we have failing tests, we can go ahead and try to implement the method. To implement our code, we're going to create a new file called string extension. You can see these asserts down here at the bottom. I put them there so that you can keep in mind what we're trying to implement. The first thing we're going to do is open up the string class. Inside there, we're going to define a isNumber method. We're going to check to see if the current string has all numbers. That's just a little regular expression. If it does, we're going to return true. Otherwise, we'll return false. Before we run the test, we need to go back into our test file and include that string extension, like so. Once we do that, we can run the test. Now you'll notice here I'm specifying dash capital I dot. When we run the test manually like this and we're requiring other files, we need to specify the load path. We need to specify where our Ruby application can find the other files that this test requires. So we do that here. We then run the test. You can see here two tests were run and we made it pass. Sweet. So that's the second step when we do test first development. Our last step is going to refactor our code if we can now that we have passing tests. And sure enough, you might have already noticed I can simplify this to simply have this single conditional because it returns true or false. So we refactor it. Then we can go back and run our tests. So here we are, we ran our tests and they all still pass. Now sometimes when we talk about test first development, we say red, green, refactor. Red meaning write a test that fails. Green meaning write enough code to make those tests pass. And then refactor, of course, reflect back on our code and see if we can improve it. Let's walk through one more example before you get to the challenges. We're going to create a humanize method. The humanize method eventually is going to lowercase and capitalize a string. So inside of our string extension test, we're going to write a really basic test. We're going to make sure that the string class responds to the humanize method. We can use assert respond to. So as you can see here, we're sending in an object and then it's going to test to make sure that it has a humanize method. Rather than defining the entire function, we're just going to write enough code to make the test pass which in this case is simply defining the function. We run the test and it passes. Now we can write another test. We're going to write test humanize returns something. So here we're going to say assert not nil. We're asserting that this method returns something that isn't nil. We're also going to give it an optional error message so that if it errors out, we have a better idea of what went wrong. Then again, in our string extension class, we write just enough code to make it pass. Let's go ahead and write another test. We're going to use assert equal this time. Assert equal takes two parameters. The first parameter is what we expect to receive back from the second parameter. So as you can see here, we're saying we expect to have this string get returned. And then the second parameter, we actually call the humanize method on a string and we want these two to match. Otherwise, the test will fail. Now inside of our humanize method, all we have to do is call dot downcase dot capitalize, run our tests, and now they pass. Another test we could write is test just for brains. We're going to use the assert match assertion. Here it takes a regex as the first parameter and it tries to match that regex against the second parameter. And if it matches, it will pass, which it does. Our method is called humanize and we want to make sure there's no zombies inside of our humanize method. So we're going to make sure that a error, a runtime error is raised when we call humanize on a string that contains the word zombie. If we run this test right now, of course, it's going to fail. That's good. We want to make sure that it fails. Then of course, the second step, 
we're going to add the implementation. So here we're going to say if the string contains zombie, raise a runtime error. And if we run the test at this point, they all pass. Test unit comes with a bunch of different assertions. Here's a couple of them. We have assert, which looks for a conditional, assert equal, assert not equal, assert respond to, assert nil, assert not nil, assert match, assert no match, assert raise, and assert kind of if you want to make sure an object is a certain class. If you need the error message for each of these to be more specific, they can all take an additional parameter, which is a string, and you can type in exactly what you want the error message to be. You've reached the end of level one, talking about test unit. It's time to get your hands dirty in the challenges. Good luck. <laughs>